Welcome back to the workshop. We're joined by Tyler Bell and this is part three of making a stupid, heavy, ridiculous forged chair. Today's episode is sponsored by Audible, which has the largest selection of audiobooks anywhere in the world. You can get started with a 30-day free trial. That includes one free audiobook and full access to the Audible Plus catalog at audible.com forward slash forge or by texting forge to 500-500. At the end of the last episode, we forged out legs, had made right and left cross members, and had made our front and rear cross members. We also experimented with magnets and felt, which is a really cool idea. Yeah. But the problem is these iron-on patches pull away from the felts really easily. So on the way out of the shop yesterday, we stopped by the helpful place. Picked up some really neat fasteners that should look pretty slick embedded in the felt. The issue is, however, we bought 60 fasteners that are all significantly too long. We need to go through 8 inch sheet and 3 8 felt. Uh, 60 fiddly little things need to get shortened down. And I think the way to do it is by making some soft drawers for the lathe. This is the most appalling bit of garbage that I've ever made. But it will work for this barrel nut. I'm really not much of like a thrower of things when things aren't going well. Except for right now. There was a moment there after this collab and that ridiculously bad tool I made where I saw that wall and I thought to myself, gee whiz, it would be really fun to throw that against that wall. This is not going well. There's so much variation between all of these heads. On some of them, it holds it tight, and then you can't get it out. And then on some of them, it doesn't hold it at all. We're gonna try cutting the whole way through this clamp I made. Maybe that works better. I am such an idiot, I am such an idiot, I am such an idiot. Didn't cut the whole way through. Tyler's now spotted exactly what I was talking about. As I was walking out there, I was looking at this, and I'm like, why can't this clamp? Well, Look at which doofus put a screw in the other side. Of course it's not gonna work. There's a screw there. That didn't feel like it worked either. I think I'm just gonna sell all my tools and uh, call it quits. <laughs> After all of that struggle and this absolutely terrible tool, it's semi-fast. So I'd have the machine running, I drop this into the bottom, it stops, vice grip closes, come over here, I grind, and I put this stop oh, brilliant. right up here. So I grind, check, grind, I throw a chamfer on it, and then with my left hand I activate the drill, take it out, squeeze, and then it's onto the next one. So, after all of this sweat and misery of making this frankly terrible jig, it has actually ended up being useful. Doing a little test piece for our stack up here just to see how well this nut sucks down through the felt. We want this head to sink down lower. Oh, is the nut not threaded deep enough? I really hope that's not the case, but it feels like it might be the case. It won't go any further. Dang it. Okay, this is as far as we can thread it onto the screw, which is why it's not sinking deeper into the felt. But if we drill and tap it, we can get more threads. We're idiots! We worked out all we have to do to make it work is just shorten the length of the bolt. So to summarize, we have shorter nuts and shorter bolts. Those are gonna be used to attach this felt to the back. Tyler has already drilled holes through the felt. It's looking awesome. Now I'm gonna back mark these holes into the steel and then drill them for the screws. Tyler just reminded me, we still need a backrest support on this thing. But what if it's strong enough to not need it? Can I have some flex? So it might be strong enough to not need a support on the back, but I think we'd need to test it. Give it some lean. That's kind of nice, it's like a rocking backrest. It's just, it's actually flexing right here. Feels so, pretty strong. So with that bolted down, that'll actually be... What happens if you like really lean back? Do you think that it's gonna bend open? When we lean into it here and it flexes in that area, we're spreading those forces along this entire area, but once we throw a bolt here, we're gonna be concentrating the forces to here. My worry is that does bend it out. I want it to still flex. 
Yeah. It's just I want it to not bend. But that's difficult, because an engineer would be able to run the calculations as to how to get this right amount of flex. I'm not an engineer. How will I make this? We're gonna have a look at the model again. Making things is difficult. Yeah, it looks like crap. Not the best piece of art. The idea is I take a bit of bar. In this face, I drill two holes. We make a bend here. This face here, we have holes. This bends out and then bends up, supporting the backrest over there. Oh, okay. I think I've got an av I've got some sort of an avenue for, for making, a, making a plan here. So I think I'm gonna start cutting metal and I'm gonna make this. You can draw holes, work on the felt. Done deal. And I'm gonna make this work. What do you think of this, Tyler? I think that looks outstanding, dude. Very cool. I love this felt material. And the barrel nuts are just awesome. So that is test fit of the felt. Done. I've got two more holes to punch. Yeah. And then it's on to assembly. starting to take shape. It looks cool, but we have a slight problem with this here. Okay. Oh wow, the, the angle of that tenon isn't quite making this cross member end up in the right spot. It needs to be here, and it's here. Oh. Yeah. That's really not good. But it's kind of good, I mean, it looks cool. Yeah, it's halfway to being a chair. And how much time do we have left? Hour, or a couple hours? Technically, minus a day. Yeah. <laughs> It was meant to be finished yesterday. And it's 5.52 in the evening the next day after we were meant to finish it. Okay, I think there's nothing to it but to see if we can either bend that tenon further across from here, or we're gonna have to put a bend in there, which isn't exactly what I'd like to do, but it might be our only option. As far as forging projects go, this is without a doubt the most complicated and difficult forging project I have undertaken in years, which is a thrill. The amount we need to change the angle is just too much to reforge it with the monkey tool. So we're making a bend in the last inch of that shaft before it comes into that thicker rectangle. And that's gonna be how we get it set to the right angle. All right, moment of truth. See how that lines up to that. Oh, that's pretty close, I dare say. All right, next step, let's cut some tenons down to length. So as you can see, there is a slight issue. You can't get the tenons in both holes at the same time. It is just not possible. So what we have to do to get these tenons in those holes is heat up this armrest portion. We're gonna bend it open, put these in, bend it back, and hopefully wake up. Feels like we started work about three hours ago. And it is just dark and miserable out here. I have just always been itching to do. Big joints, big tenons, rivets, big old chunky bits of steel, this is what it's about.
Okay. Now I'm going to see how the backrest interacts with the backrest support. You need to open it up more? Yes, yeah, to come back. Amazing. It needs to come back like an inch and a half. So, we're going to just open up these bends. Right, we've now leveled the chair. And with a chair that's level, we can now come in with a bit of chalk on top of a block, mark the whole way around on every leg, and then cut it to make sure the chair ends up level. A forged chair, Tyler! We've done it! Isn't that excellent? It is so comfortable. Oh, I could hang out here for a good while. Surprisingly comfortable. It is amazing. The structure of this whole thing relies on those square tenons, and it is just really, really, really sturdy. This is a solid, solid chair. Got the right amount of flex back here. We started this project last Monday, and it's 2.56 yeah. in the morning on a Tuesday. So we put some time into this, and I have had a great time. I feel like I've really pushed my boundaries of forging thanks to this project. Yeah, I learned an absolute ton hanging out here with you. Good. Well, I appreciate that a lot. Folks, please, please, please go check out Tyler Bell Makes on YouTube and on Instagram. Go check out some of his videos. If you enjoy it, which you probably will, hit subscribe, because plenty more awesome stuff is coming. As we end this, thank you, Tyler. Dude. Pleasure hanging out with you, man. And we'll thank our sponsor. Today's episode has been sponsored by Audible, and I have recently been listening to The Perfectionists by Simon Winchester. It goes through the history of engineering and precision. It recounts the history of how the first boring mill could create the first steam engine that showed that it was a viable product that helped spur the Industrial Revolution all the way through to how increases in precision allow us to see into the depths of outer space. This audiobook has been a thrill to listen to, and with Audible, you can find any audiobook to suit any occasion. Whether you want some entertainment and a fast pace, you want a thriller, you can get it on Audible. Whether you want to learn about how to grow and develop your business, you can learn it on Audible. Or whether you want to learn about the history of engineering, you can do it with Audible by getting one free audiobook at audible.com forward slash forge, as well as access to the full Audible Plus catalog. And don't forget, you can also text forge to 500 500. Thank you, Audible, for sponsoring this. Quick reminder, the Steels 01 work pants are dropping on the 2nd of November, and we can't wait to see you on the website there. Check out Audible. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.